Welcome to part one of this tutorial series where I'm going to show you how to create this cartoon stylized Thanksgiving turkey in Blender. So it's almost Thanksgiving day of 2022 so I thought this would be a really fun tutorial to create for the holiday. And also if you have any Thanksgiving themed tutorial requests then definitely let me know in the comments. So this is going to be a three part tutorial series. So in part one, we're going to start by creating the base mesh. And then in part two, we are going to be sculpting the turkey. And then in part three, we're going to do the lighting and the materials and render the scene and do the compositing. Now I'm going to be using the cycles rendering engine. I do like the more realism and lighting that you can get with cycles, but you could definitely use Blender Eevee if you want to. Now there are just two things that won't work quite the same in Blender Eevee. One thing is the shadow catcher on the ground and then the other thing that won't work in Blender Eevee is the pointiness value using the geometry node in the shader editor. So if you are using Eevee but you want to get that similar effect that I'm going to be adding to the materials of the turkey then you could use the ambient occlusion node instead or you could just use a single color instead. Now also in this tutorial I'm not going to be adding the pumpkins and the thanksgiving words. If you want to add those in you can totally do that later in your own time but if you'd like to learn how to create the pumpkins that I've added to this final render here then I have a tutorial on how to create procedural pumpkins in Blender, you can check out that tutorial with the link in the description. Or if you'd like to help support me and this channel and purchase the pumpkin project files, then you can get that on my Gumroad and my Patreon with the links in the description. And on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, you can also get the finished tutorial files for this Thanksgiving turkey 3D artwork. So I'll have the links to the project files in the description as well, and that's a great way to help support me and this channel. Now we are going to be doing sculpt sculpting in Blender to create the turkey. So if you're a complete beginner to sculpting in Blender, then you might want to check out my sculpting with Blender for beginners tutorial, but I will be going very slowly and showing you the entire process. And I'm also going to be using a drawing tablet for the sculpting. And I would definitely recommend using a drawing tablet if you're able to. And I'm going to be using my Huion screen drawing tablet. So it's a tablet that I can draw on the screen, but you definitely don't need something that fancy. Even if you can just use one of those little pad tablets, that will be much better than using a Mouse. And I will have Amazon links in the video description to some tablets that I recommend, and those are affiliate links, so if you purchase something through those links, that will help me out, but with no extra cost to you. But if you don't have a drawing tablet or you're not able to get one, you can still just use a normal computer mouse for the sculpting, but I think it will be harder and the result may not be quite as good. Now in the last part of the tutorial series, when we do the lighting, I am going to be using this Phaser Forest 01, so this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com links in the description if you want to download it and I'm downloading the 1k HDR version and you can just download this and in part three of the tutorial series we'll be adding this in to help us get some nice lighting now if you want to see what buttons I'm pressing I have my screencast keys right here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing so I'm first going to press the a key to select everything and then I'll press X and let's click on delete always make sure you delete the default cube I'm now going to press shift A and let's go to mesh and I'm going to start by creating the turkey's body. So to do that, we're going to add an icosphere. Now right above me, you can see there's that little add icosphere setting. Just click on the arrow to open this up and on the subdivisions here, I'm just going to turn this up to like a six and I want it to be pretty high detailed because we are going to be sculpting this object. So it's better if the detail is already higher. So I can click on this arrow to close the add icosphere setting and I can press the period on the numpad and that's going to zoom in to to the object. And then let's also save this Blender file. So you can press Control S or click on File and let's click on Save As. And I'll just save this as ThanksgivingTurkey.Blend in a folder with my other files and I'll click on Save As. And then as you're working on the project, you can just press Control S and that will save the Blender file. All right, so I'm now going to press the Tab key to go into edit mode of this object and I wanna duplicate this object and make the legs of the turkey. So press the A key to select everything, make sure you're in edit mode when you do this and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate and I'm going to bring this down place it there and then I can just scale this object down and this is going to be the leg of the turkey I'm also going to scale this and I'll hit Z to scale it up on the Z axis 
just bring it up like that. And then I could also bring this up. Let's press one on the numpad to go to front view and I could scale this down a bit. Scale it down even more and I'll just kind of stick it about there. And then I want to flatten the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just select a vertex there on the bottom and then you can press the O key or click right here to turn on the proportional editing and I can press G to grab and then I can scroll with my mouse wheel and I'm just going to make that smaller and then just kind of place it right there and then I'll press the O key to turn off the proportional editing and I can press the tab key to go back to object mode. Now you can see that this isn't actually mirrored over to the other side but we're going to be using the symmetry option in the sculpt mode to actually mirror it over to the other side. Let's also press 3 on the numpad to go to side view, and you can see that the leg isn't actually kind of in the center. So I'll press tab to go back into edit mode. I'm going to make sure I deselect everything with the A key, and then I'm going to hover my mouse over this mesh here and press the L key to select the linked vertices. And I can just bring it over and just stick it right there. So now it's more in the center. All right, so now we can mirror it over to the other side. So what I'm going to do is click here on object mode, and I'm going to change this to the sculpt mode and then you can see right up here there is the symmetry options so I'm going to click on this arrow to bring this down and we want to make sure the direction is negative x to positive x so negative x is over here you can see the red line is the x-axis so it's going to go from negative x and mirror it over to the positive x so click on the arrow and you can click on symmetrize and so there we go now it's mirrored over to the other side so let's click on sculpt mode and I can go back to object mode. Let's press control S to save the blender file again. So I also want to make the wings or the object for the wings. So I'm going to press shift S. I'm going to move my mouse to cursor to world origin and let go. That'll just make sure the 3D cursor is in the very center. So I can now press shift A and I'm going to go down here to mesh and I'm going to add another icosphere. And you can see the icosphere is added in the center because the 3D cursor was in the very center there. And we still have these subdivisions at 6. If you click right here to open up the Add Icosphere settings, you can see it's set to 6. So I will press the Tab key to go to Edit Mode. I can bring it over on the x-axis. Just move that over. And I can also scale this down on the x-axis. Bring it down like that. Let's hit 1 on the numpad. That's going to go to Front View. And I can scale this down a bit more. And let's scale on the x-axis a little bit more just to kind of flatten it. And this is going to be the object for the turkey's wing. So just place it there. Something like that. I think I want to bring it in a bit more. So I will press the Set on the numpad to go to top view I can bring it in a little bit just stick it there and then I also want to have it kind of rotate around the turkey a little bit so I'm going to select a vertex there and let's press the O key again to turn on the proportional editing or you can click on that button there and I can press G to grab scroll with your mouse wheel to make the proportional editing bigger place it there and then I can select a vertex and just move it over and you can scroll your mouse wheel. I'm going to scroll it a little bit more down and just bring that in. So press tab to go back to object mode. You can see now that's just kind of rotating a little bit and I do like that a bit better. It'll make the sculpting a little bit easier. So I now want to mirror this over to the other side. So I'm going to click right here on the modifier properties. Let's click on add modifier and I can go down here and add the mirror modifier under generate kind of in the center. And you can see because the object's origin is in the very center of the 3D scene, it's going to mirror it over to the other side. All right, so that's good. Let's press control S again to save. So let's now press shift S again, go to cursor to world origin because I want to add a new object and let's press shift A. I'm going to go to mesh and again, I'm going to add another icosphere and I can press the tab key to go into edit mode. I can bring the icosphere down and actually I want to click right here to turn off the proportional editing and I'm going to scale this down, make it really small and this is going to be the lower legs of the turkey. So I can scale this down even more. I can also scale it up on the Z axis to make it longer and just make it about that big. And I can press one on the numpad to go to front view and I'll just kind of move it over there and I'll bring it up a little bit more. And then I can press three on the numpad for side view and I can bring it back a little bit and just stick it there. All right, so I can tab to go back to object mode and I want to mirror it over to the other side. So let's click on add modifier and add the mirror modifier. And because we moved the object over in edit mode, the origin point is still in the center there. So it's going to mirror it over correctly on the X axis. 
So I'll press the tab key again to go back into edit mode. And I want to press the A key to make sure I select everything. And I'll press period on the numpad to zoom into the selection. So I want to duplicate this object and I want to make the claws. So I'm going to press shift D that will duplicate it. I can just place it there. And then I want to hit R to rotate. We can hit X to rotate it on the X axis. And I'm going to type in 90 and then enter. I could also scale this object down on the Z axis to kind of flatten it. And then I will bring it down on the Z axis. So we're just making the feet of the turkey. And I think I'll scale the whole thing up a little bit. So this is going to be like the back claw and the front claw. So I'm now going to press Shift D again to duplicate. Let's bring this over and then I want to scale this on the Y axis so it's not quite as thick. And then I'm going to rotate this and I'll rotate it on the Z axis, kind of rotate it to the side like that. And then I can push it into the other object. So this is going to be the other claw. I could even scale this down kind of on the X axis to make it a bit thinner, something like that. And then I can press Shift D again to duplicate it. We can rotate it on the Z axis and I'll just rotate that over and we'll just stick it kind of about there. All right, press the tab key to go back to object mode. So let's now model the neck. So I'm going to press Shift S again, go to Cursor to World Origin, and I can press Shift A. Let's go to Mesh, and I'm going to add a cylinder. And then I can press 3 on the numpad to go to Side View, and let's go into Edit Mode again. And I will scale the object down, and I can move it up. And then I'm going to rotate it over to kind of fit it to the neck scale that down a bit and let's like stick it right there and then in the same objects edit mode i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to go down here and add an icosphere and i can press g to grab let's bring this up and i'll scale it down and we're just going to put this icosphere kind of right in here so i'm just going to move it and scale it and kind of stick it there where the neck is and then i want to press the a key to make sure i select the entire mesh and i'll press shift d again to duplicate and i'm going to rotate this over and we're going to make the kind of the second part of the neck so maybe scale that up a little bit I'll deselect everything with the A key and then press the L key with my mouse hovered over this object to select the entire linked mesh. And I can press G to grab, kind of move that over there, just place it right there. All right, if I tab to go back to object mode, uh, that neck is definitely too big. So in object mode, I'm going to scale the entire object down, just make it a bit smaller because it's a little bit too big. I'll press three for side view, scale that down a bit more. So something like that is better. And I can also bring this object up, maybe scale it down a little bit more. That's a better size. All right, so let's add another object for the head. So I'll press Shift S, go to Cursor to World Origin. I can press Shift A, and I'm gonna add another icosphere and I can move this icosphere up. I'm gonna scale it down a little bit and just like bring it down there. All right, just fit it on top of the neck. I can also scale it on the Z axis to make it longer because I do want the head to be a little bit longer and just kind of stick it right there. And then make sure this object is selected and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it. Let's rotate it over sideways and I can actually type in 90 to rotate it exactly over by 90 degrees. And then this is gonna be the beak. So I wanna scale this down on the Z axis to make it a bit thinner. And then I can rotate it so it's kind of slanted down and move it over. So something like that is pretty good. Maybe make it a bit smaller. And then again, press Shift S. We're going to go to Cursor to World Origin just to make sure the 3D cursor is in the center. And I now want to make the eyes. So I'll press Shift A. And for the eyes, I want to use a UV sphere. So what I'm going to do is press G and then Z. Just bring that up. And then before I move it aside, I'm going to press the Tab key to go into Edit Mode. Then I can press G to grab and move it over. That way the 3D cursor is in the very center there. So I can click on Add Model modifier on the modifier properties and under generate I can add the mirror modifier and that way the eyes will be mirrored over on the object's origin. I can also rotate the objects. Let's rotate it on the x-axis and I'll type in 90 just to rotate that over by 90 degrees and I'll also scale the whole thing down a little bit and just move it into the head. Scale it down a little bit. You can of course make whatever size you want. So if you want kind of a, like a googly eyed turkey, you could make really big eyes or you could make smaller eyes. 
I'm just gonna make kind of some cartoony eyes, so maybe about that big. We can, of course, move it around later if we want to. All right, press the tab key to go back to object mode. Let's press control S to save. So now we're gonna be adding those little like red pieces of skin which kind of come down on the turkey. So again, press Shift S. We're gonna to go to Cursor to World Origin. I'll press Shift A. And for this, I'm gonna add a cube. And I can bring the cube up on the Z axis. And I can also bring the cube over on the Y axis. And let's scale it down a little bit. So I'll press Tab to go into edit mode and I can scale the cube down even more. I'll press period on the numpad to zoom into the object, and I'm gonna scale it down even more and also scale it down on the Z axis like that. And I can bring it down, and we're just gonna kinda of stick it right down here, kind of in the center of the eyes. And then I'm gonna press tab to go back to object mode, and I will press control two. Control two is going to add the subdivision surface modifier. You can also just click on add modifier and add the subdivision surface. And then I'm gonna use the object context menu and shade the object smooth. So I can now go back into edit mode with the tab key, and I think I'll scale this up a little bit more. And then I'm gonna click right up here. You can also click on the three on the top of your keyboard that's going to go to the face select mode and I want to select this face and I'm going to press E to extrude and then let's rotate this on the Z axis and I'll bring it over and we're just going to kind of model that red piece of skin so bring it over like that and then again you can press the E key to extrude it and let's rotate it over kind of bring it down rotate it to the side, scale it down a little bit, E to extrude again, rotate this down. And of course, once we sculpt the beak shape, once the beak shape is more defined, we could just kind of model this again or change the shape of it a little bit to kind of fit the beak. I'll just extrude that out one more time, kind of rotate it down. And then you can click right back here to go to the vertex select mode, or you can press the one on the top of your keyboard. And I'm going to click and drag just to box select all those vertices and also navigate over here and press B for the box select, click and drag and box select those vertices. I'm going to bring them in a little bit, so something like that. And then also if you want to kind of give a bit more detail, you can press Control R. That will add a loop cut, and then I can left click and then right click so it's in the center, and I can bring that out and maybe rotate it over a little bit. So something like that, I'm just gonna go back to object mode. That is pretty good for now, um, but we can kind of edit it later once we have the beak of the shape more defined. Let's press Control S again to save. And then I'm gonna do a very similar thing for like the little red part on the bottom of the beak. So I'll press Shift C again to center the 3D cursor. I can press Shift A. Let's go to mesh and I'm gonna add another cube. Let's bring the cube over on the Y axis and then also bring it up on the Z axis. And I'll scale the cube down so it's pretty small. And then again, let's press Control 2. Control 2 is the shortcut key to add a subdivision surface modifier. And then I can use the object context menu and shade the object smooth. And I can now bring it over. Let's bring it back on the Y axis. And I'm also gonna bring it up on the Z axis. All right, press the tab key to go into edit mode. And I want to scale the whole thing down on the X axis so it's a little bit smaller. And then I'll also just scale the whole thing up a bit. And then let's also click right here to go to the face select mode. And I wanna select this face here, the bottom face. I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude this down place it there and then I can press E to extrude again but then this one I'm going to scale it and let's scale it on the y-axis and make that a bit smaller so something like that. Let's also navigate inside the turkey and I can select that face right there and I can also scale that one on the y-axis so it gets a little bit thinner as it goes up. And I think I might select the entire thing with the A key and I'll bring the entire thing back a bit just like that. All right, that is it, so that is pretty good for now. Although, one more thing, I think I will scale the whole thing down a bit, because it's a little bit big, and bring it up a little bit. And then I will go back to object mode, and I'm gonna select this object here, and I will press Shift D to duplicate it. Let's bring it up on the Z axis, and I'm gonna make kind of like some little stylized hair on the top of the turkey. So I'm gonna rotate this object over. Let's rotate it on the X axis, and I'll rotate it all the way over. And then I can bring it over on the Y axis and bring it down on the Z axis. 
and we'll scale the object down a little bit. And I'll press the period on the numpad to zoom into the object. So I'll press the tab key to go into edit mode, and I'm going to press the A key to select everything. Let's also look on this on side view. So I'll press three on the numpad to go to side view, and I can maybe bring this up a bit. And then I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. Let's rotate this over, something like that. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button and go into wireframe and I can deselect everything, and I will click and drag just to box select those top vertices, and I'm gonna rotate them and bring them over a bit. And then I wanna make this kind of rotate more, so I will press Control R to add a loop cut. I'm gonna left click and right click so the loop cut stays there in the center, and I can press G to grab and bring this up a bit. Also, I can hold down the Alt key and select that loop of vertices right there, and I can scale it down a little bit and kind of bring it up a bit. All right, that's pretty good. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the object and press the L key to select the linked mesh. I'll press Shift D, that'll duplicate it. And then I want to basically invert it. So instead of it rotating this way, it's rotating the other way. So I'm gonna press S to scale, and then I'm going to hit Y to scale it on the Y axis. Then I can type in negative one and enter so that it's rotated over. And then I can just kind of rotate it and scale it and kind of fit it to where I want. Also, I could box select some of these areas and just kind of rotate them just to kind of change the shape a little bit. So I'm just going to box select some of these vertices and kind of change the shape. And then also you can see that the normals have been flipped. And that's because we basically flipped this object inside out. So press the A key to select everything. And I can press Shift N to recalculate the normals. And I'll press the tab key to go back to object mode. So there we go. We now have some nice little stylized hair on the top of the turkey. So we are almost done with the base mesh of the turkey, but I still want to create the big tail on the back of the turkey. So I'll press Shift S. So let's go to cursor to world origin. And then I can press Shift A. I'm going to go to mesh and I'm going to add another cube. And we're going to create a similar thing, kind of like what we did with the hair. So I want to actually hide everything else from our view just so that we can see the cube. So with the cube selected, I can press Shift H. Shift H will hide everything else that is not selected. So I will press tab to go into edit mode and I wanna scale the object on the X axis, make it a bit smaller, also scale the whole thing down. And then I can scale the entire thing up and let's scale it up on the Z axis and make it a bit longer. And I can also bring it up on the Z axis and just like place it right there. So the origin point is gonna be right down there and then the feather is gonna come up. So I can now go right here to the face select mode and I'm gonna select this face and I wanna scale the entire thing up, scale the face up on the X axis so it's a bit longer and then I can also bring it down on the Z axis a bit. Then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude that face up there and then I can scale that face on the Y axis, actually the X axis to make it a bit smaller. So we're just making the shape of the back feathers. Let's also select the bottom face and I can scale the bottom face down on the x-axis, so something like that. And then also it is a little bit thin on the side, so I will press the A key to select everything and let's scale the entire thing up on the y-axis. All right, I'm gonna go back to object mode now and then I can press control two. That is again gonna add the subdivision surface modifier. Now this time, instead of using a viewport and a render levels of two, I'm gonna turn these up to three so that it is even more detailed. And then you can use the object context menu to shade the object smooth. So now what I wanna do is add the array modifier and we're gonna use the array modifier to array all the feathers around. So with the object selected, let's click on add modifier and enter generate it's the first one the array modifier now right here on the array modifier you can turn up the count but the count is just going to make it go over on one axis but i don't want to do that i want to rotate it over sideways so it's kind of going to be like a fan shape so to do this i want to add a new object and the object will control where it's going to rotate from so i can press shift a and I'm going to go right down here and add an empty and let's add the plane axis. So I'm going to leave the empty right there and I'm going to click back here on this object. And I don't want to use the relative offset. I want to instead use the object offset. So click on the object offset. 
And then right here on object, we can click on the eyedropper and I'm going to select the empty object. So I can now select the empty and I can rotate the empty and I can move the empty around and you can see if I move the empty that's going to control where the feathers are. So I'm going to bring the empty over on the X axis. I can also press one on the numpad to go to front view and then I can rotate it and you can see when I rotate this it's also going to rotate the feathers around. So I'm going to rotate this over and then I can maybe bring it back a little bit. So just kind of move that around until it's kind of giving you that shape. But then if I click back on this object here, I don't just want to have three of them. I actually want to have 10 feathers. So right here on the array count, I'm going to turn this number up to 10. But you can see when I turn it up to 10, now it's rotating over way too much. So what you can do is hold down the Z button, go back to wireframe, and you can select the empty again, and then go back to solid view. So if I just rotate this empty less, then it won't be rotating around quite as much. So I'm going to rotate the empty and I'm going to rotate it back. And you can see if I rotate it to zero, they're basically going to be all on top of each other. But then if I rotate it more and more, they're going to be kind of fanning out. So I will just rotate that over to something like that. And don't worry about it being kind of cockeyed over here to the side. We will rotate that over later. I could also maybe bring the entire thing out a bit. And kind of rotate it over and then of course you can move the empty to kind of change where the center is all right so once the tail is how you like you can select both the empty and the object so hold down the shift key and select both of them and because they are both selected you can now rotate them and it's not actually going to distort the shape of those feathers so i'm going to now rotate both objects over and i'm going to bring them here into the center and then I can move over here and I'm going to bring them back a bit on the Y axis. So I can now press Alt H. Alt H is going to unhide everything. And again, I can just like box select both of these objects and I can scale them and I can move them over and kind of stick them on the back of the turkey. So I'll press three on the numpad to go to side view. And I'm going to zoom in here and I can just rotate this over so that the tail is kind of rotated back. And I'll also scale the object down a little bit more kind of rotate that back and then I want to stick it inside the back of the turkey so I will bring it forward on the y-axis just kind of stick it right there so something like that is pretty good and make sure it looks good from front view that's very important especially for the final render it should look pretty good from the front view I think I might scale the whole thing up just a little and then I think I actually want the rotation to be a little bit bigger so you can go back here and you can select the empty object and then what you can do is hit R to rotate and then if you hit the Y key once that is going to rotate it on the global Y but if you hit the Y key again that's going to rotate it on the local Y so the Y axis of the actual empty so I can rotate that over a bit farther something like that and then I can hold down the shift key and select both objects and let's rotate that back a little bit so it's more straight all right, so that is it. There's the base mesh for the turkey. So I'll just press Control S again to save, and this is going to finish it up for part one of the tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying this so far, and thank you for watching. And I'll be uploading part two soon after this part, so when part two is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen and also the link in the video description. And in part two, we are going to be doing all of the sculpting for the turkey. So again, thank you for watching, happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you in the next part. Thank you.